Jackson more than it did Salvi. And now Massey hits it into deep right center field. Three run home run. Massey's up there and he's a left hander facing a left handed pitcher and lots of times they like to sweep that ball away. But if it's in the middle, it can be highly flammable. You already know what time it is. It is time for that Royals recap. And I am coming to you tonight with a big old smile on my face because guess what? Your Kansas City Royals are currently riding a seven game win streak, improving to 33 and 19 and opening up the series against the Tampa Bay Rays with a resounding eight to one win behind the arm of Seth Lugo behind several different bats. Let's go ahead and talk about it. But first, the place to go if you want more to know is RoyalsReview.com. You can go check them out for news, analysis, and commentary on all things Kansas City Royals. A great crew, uh, a great article from Matthew Lamar today talking about the front office and their role in this winning team and their turnaround from the 56-106 team of last year. They're putting those sour memories behind very, very quickly. And these these players showing up like they did like they did in Tropicana Field tonight is just another example. So. I already mentioned Seth Lugo. Let's go ahead and talk about him because he had another stellar night from the mound, earning his eighth win on the season, pitching seven innings of one run ball. That lone run came in the first inning, six scoreless innings, only allowed four hits with two walks. That is a, that's a pretty good show. And if you do ask me, that ERA is still sitting south of two, currently at 1.74. And then it only helps that the bullpen comes in behind him and cleans things up. Sam Long pitching a clean eighth inning, and he is now retired the first six batters he has faced in a Kansas City Royals uniform. So good for Sam. Glad to see him succeeding after being called up. And then Carlos Hernandez made his first appearance of the 2024 season coming back to the roster after the team designated Tyler Duffy for assignment, pitched the bottom of the ninth inning, no hits allowed. It was uh, it was pretty noisy, though. I, I will say there was a lot of uh, balls caught at the wall or deep in the outfield. So it wasn't perfect. He didn't get a strikeout, but all that matters is he kept the Rays off the board. And this this is just one of those games where pitching the contact worked. All right. There's only four strikeouts across the entire game, but only four hits and two walks. That is uh, that's pretty solid. If you do ask me, the only thing better than a solid bullpen performance was this whole lineup. Y'all every single batter had a hit except for one person. No, it's not Garrett Hampson who made the start. No, it's not Hunter Renfro who had another start in the eight hole. It was Salvador Perez. He was the lone guy who did not get a hit tonight. Very surprising. But the lineup around him did their job and got things done. Michael Garcia, Bobby Wood Jr., Vinny Pasquantino, Kyle Isbell, Nelson Velasquez, and Hunter Renfro all had one hit. And Bobby's one hit, man, it was an absolute bomb in the seventh inning. And that was that was a no doubter. That was one of the prettiest home runs I've seen this season. And Bobby now has eight in 2024. So he is he's finding that power again. He had that two home run game the other night. And I'm very curious to see what he's on pace for right now. Preston Farr, if you're listening, go ahead and drop that pace, that pace, excuse me in the Spotify Q and A's Michael Massey though he had the real the real hit that just blew this whole thing open had a three run shot in the top of the fifth inning for his second hit on the evening unfortunately he did have to leave due to lower back tightness so we will we'll keep a close eye on what is going on there unfortunately that is the reason why he started 2024 late so really hoping that he didn't re-aggravate something hopefully this was just a, a precaution and thankfully Garrett Hampson was in the game so he just shifted down from center field to second base and that is where Kyle Isbell 
came in relief. Freddie Fermin had another multi-hit game, extending his overall hit streak to eight games, a career high. So good for Freddie. Love seeing him produce when uh, when he's given given the opportunity. And it just spells more of the other batters in the in the lineup. And he's a very, very productive man in the six hole. Like I said, Hunter Renfro, he did have a hit tonight. He had an RBI, also had a walk. Um, and his first stolen base since 2022. Yeah, I guess Hunter Renfro has the green light on the base pass, y'all. So watch out. It's the second coming of country breakfast on base pass. And then lastly, you have Garrett Hampson, who he did have two hits. He did have a walk, but I'm uh, I'm going to be more remembering his tootlon of tonight. Just getting caught out, being overly aggressive, leading off from second base. But your boys got it done. Twelve hits leading to eight runs, only eight strikeouts. Hey, there's there's nothing not to like about this game there there really isn't guys were producing with runners in scoring position just like they have been for most of this season that is that's not a a one-off this is a a trend now there's a lot of these bats that are producing when guys are on base in front of them so absolutely love to see that another short game tonight two hours and 25 minutes in front of 16,000 Rays fans in Tropicana Field Coming up on the other side of the ad break, we will hear from the veteran Hunter Renfro. And then I imagine uh, Joel or someone will corner manager Mac Quatrero for a word. Stay tuned. Yeah, we're already getting the little shower from a distance from Bobby Wood Jr. He did a bit of everything tonight. We know you can play that defense. Run, we got to see him running the bases, creative move there at home. But I just want to ask you about this team, though, the way you're able to quickly put up those runs just immediately, it feels like. How are you doing it? Uh, I mean, I think we're, we got a lot of athletic guys on this team, and, and we got everybody's hungry to win, and, and uh, obviously... He's trying to direct me to get out of the way. I guess he's worried about the suit. Go on. It's, uh, it's a new heck of base runners, and obviously it's great baseball players in general. And obviously our pitch itself keeping us in and everything. So it's phenomenal. You, all right, he's, now he's chucking gum. At least it's wrapped. He's having fun. You guys are all having fun, though. This is uh, such an entertaining group to watch. How have you been able to mesh so quickly? It almost seemed like as early as spring training. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a lot of great guys. First and first, foremost, like they put, you know, Q and JJ and those guys put together a lot of great guys and that's first and foremost like if you have a bunch of great dudes in a clubhouse you're going to mesh pretty quickly and, and obviously you have guys that like will and and, and lugo and, and singer and and Vinny and all those guys that older and younger guys meshing together is phenomenal and they, everybody wants to grow and be a better baseball player on this team and i think that's what we're doing i asked you before the game and i, I want to go to it again i don't know if it's fair a comparison to the 2020 race team you played on first off we're in may but that was just a 60 game season it's so early but yet you, you saw some similarities, didn't you? Oh, for sure. You know, this team has a lot of spunk and a lot of fight. And, you know, I think that we showed that early on. And, and a lot of these games that we came back from behind. And and uh, I think, you know, all these younger guys are still learning. They're still learning how to play Major League Baseball. And, and it's phenomenal, like I said, to, to see the growth just in, in this short two or three months we played. And, uh, and obviously, like I said, that, that 2020 team was a special team. And, and, man, we could pitch the ball like no other person I've ever seen, obviously, except for L.A., you know, that beat us. But, uh, you know, we had a phenomenal team that year, and, and um, I mean, I do see a lot of similarities. Just young guys that are are just hungry to win, and and uh, great pitching staff. And uh, I think honestly, we have a better uh, position group here than we did there. Last thing, it looks like the bat is starting to come around. We've seen the defense, the arm all year long. And now we get to see the base running tonight, a stolen base, and then what happened at, at home plate there? How good are you feeling overall? I feel good. The legs feel fine. Uh, that's what I tell everybody. I was like, man, if I could just get some hits, we'd be a lot better off. But uh, I feel good. Uh, you're running the base. The legs feel great. Arm feels great. Body feels good. Uh, just gotta get some hits, get some luck to fall. Hit the ball well right now. Just gotta find some holes. Keep it rolling. Thanks for joining. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, Hunter Renfro getting it done tonight on the base pass in the field and at the plate. 
Yeah, it's just the same thing, low back tightness that he's dealt with. Um, we don't think it's very serious, but we just want to be cautious there and get him out. Um, secondly, we look at what Drawfness did today, kind of help picking up and go after game with that early run. What did you see out of the, the unit for you guys? Well, well, if he gives up one run, we'll be all right. Uh, he's been amazing. The guys put really good at-bats together. You know, the Alexander can be tough with the change of speed and, you know, really locating at the corners, getting the ball up, but guys put good at-bats together. He scored eight plus runs in like five straight games. First, second time it's ever been done in the franchise. What about just offense generally the, the last week or so? Yeah, I think, I think the word that comes to mind, they've just been relentless because it, it has, you know, some of it's been early in the game. We've expanded later. Some of it's just been consistent, you know, throughout the game. And I think that's just a testament to the guys up and down the order, you know, not giving up, giving good at bats and making, you know, passing the baton to the next guy. What did you see out of South Lugo on the mound? More of the same, man. I mean, just throw. He, clearly, they knew he was going to throw a lot of strikes. So they were really aggressive, swinging at the first pitch. You know, the first time through the order, and you know, he located. I mean, a couple, you know, well placed hits in the first, and the hit by pitch. You know, um, so after that, you know, they he kept him off the barrel. He just kept mixing it up and moving it around. And then um, Carlos Hernandez coming in there in the ninth inning. What would you see just for him coming back in there? His uh, debut for you guys this year. Yeah, it's good to get him back. I mean, we know he's got a great arm. Um, you know, it's good for him to knock the rust off and, you know, get some of the nerves done and, and now it can get in there. You won your 33, 33rd game tonight and didn't get that to August 1st last year. I know there's a long way to go, but just could you speak to the turnaround and the feeling, obviously, in the clubhouse is a lot different than it was this time last year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, you know, I, I, these are two totally different teams. You know, this, we made a lot of changes in the offseason, you know, and the guys that were here have matured a lot and you see that on the field every night, not only on the field, but off the field and the way they handle themselves. Um, the way they compete, the way they turn the page one day to the next. And there's no secret. The, the pitching has been so good, and that's that's the bottom line. We've been pitching extremely well, and that gives you a chance to win every night. A couple of nice plays defensively. Uh, Nelson Velasquez making that play there in the ninth inning. What do you think of his jump just going to get that ball at the wall? Yeah, he read that ball really well. I mean, I you know I thought I had a chance to get off the wall, if not more, and he was on it the whole way. Good beat on it and good route. Have you taken the warning given tonight? I, I shouldn't say anything. All righty, let's go ahead and get to your Spotify Q&As and get on out of here. If this is your first time listening to us, thank you for joining us. But if you don't know, over on Spotify, you have access to our polls and our questions and answers. Um, had a great showing on the poll from our full length episode with Jeremy Greco. So appreciate y'all y'all showing out in that. I did ask how many games will Kansas City win down in Tampa? Because, as you may or may not know, they have not won a series in Tropicana Field since 2017. That is right. We're, we are more than seven years past. And they haven't won a season series over the Rays since then. So I, I'm not, uh, not dogging folks for being a little bearish on the Royals on the road. But 16 out of 21 respondents did say they will get two wins with the other five saying they will get one win. So they've already hit that wicket. Let's see if they can go get a second one tomorrow night. But now on to the Q&As. If you respond to our q and A, I I will read it on air in the following episode. Christopher Palmer says, Bobby for MVP. Two absolute bombs to Dongtown. I've never seen a home run hit that far at the K. The boys are playing some ball. Let's go Royals and sweep the Kit Kats back to Detroit. And that is exactly what they did. So, Christopher, they uh, they made your dreams come true there. Luke 57 says, can't have much more of a stress-free game. This is incredible. Let's go for the sweep. And, Luke, I was uh, I was stressing. Even though it was Seth on the, on the mound tonight, I was worried after that first inning run. And they put those fears to bed real quick. Ginger 620 says, always good to see some long dongs from Bobby. Very fun game all around, as was tonight's Ginger. And then lastly, Andy Wells says, so much fun watching the Royals from here in England. After all the years of struggles, the boys are playing some ball. Thank you for joining us from abroad, Andy. Do uh, do appreciate it. And yeah, I'm sure those are some late nights and early mornings for y'all across the pond. 
All right. So, like I said, they're they are going for the series win tomorrow. It, uh, it's crazy to to say that the the Rays have kind of been an AL boogeyman for for a while. Now they're they're not so much. They're sitting at twenty five and twenty seven, but still a, a very solid team. Brady Singer will be making the start with his 4-2 and record and 2.70 ERA. We will see what he could do against the Rays. Thank you for joining me tonight on the Royals Recap. My name is Jacob Milham. Make sure to follow us on social media and follow us wherever you're listening to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. I'll talk to you all tomorrow, and until next time, go Royals!